All right, guys, uh, we are going to be looking at linear expressions and the real world context. So what we're going to do is uh, look at a few word problems. I'm going to show you how to solve them. And then we're going to deal with just simplifying expressions. So uh, the first problem, it says Lena went shopping for decorations for her birthday party. She started with $20. She bought four bags of balloons that cost X dollars each. Two rolls of steam, uh, steamers that cost two, excuse me, streamers that cost two dollars and twenty-five cents each, and one pack of hats that cost four dollars and fifty cents. So the first thing that it always wants us to do is identify the unknown variable, and the unknown variable here is the cost of balloons because it says four bags of balloons cost X dollars. So where it says that, identify the unknown variable. It's going to be balloons. And then um, it says, write an expression that represents the amount of money remaining. Well, we know she started with $20. So she started with $20, and since she's buying, she's subtracting, she's taking away. So she first took away um, four bags of balloons, and then she also bought two rolls of streamers, which were $2.25 each and one pack of party hats. So basically this is the cost of what she spent on decorations so far. So what we're gonna do is simplify this by first um, combining like terms. And so we're gonna have 20 minus 4x, two times $2.25 is gonna be $4.50, and minus the other $4.50. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this just a tad, and it's going to look like $20 minus, now I'm going to combine these two right here, and that's going to be minus $9 minus 4x. And this will simplify to 11 minus 4x. Now, since this is, has a variable, the 4x, and this does not, it's a constant, we cannot combine them any further. So where it says simplify the expression, that is this part right here, and I can no longer simplify it. Now let's say we get more information, and it says if each bag of balloons is $2.50, how much will she have left? Well, currently she has $11 left. She's buying four, or excuse me, four bags of balloons, which is $2.50 each. And if you have four bags, that's going to uh, times $2.50. That is going to give you $10. So it's going to be 11 minus 10 which will equal $1. So uh, Lena will have $1 left. Okay, so it says the official tennis court has a width that is 42 feet shorter than the length. It says identify the unknown quantities, right, an expression that represents the perimeter of the tennis court. So um, we're going to simplify that as well. So remember, the first thing we want to know is what is the perimeter. The perimeter is the distance on the outside. And what we currently do not know is the length and the width. But it does give us some information. So I'm going to say the unknown variable is the length. So it says that the official tennis courts has a width that is 42 feet shorter than the length. Well, if my length is right here, I'll call this my x. And I know the width is 42 times shorter than that. So it would be x minus 42. And if I just label all these values, so I'll put an x here and an x minus 42 here. And if I can combine all these, so I'm going to basically add up all four sides, I'm going to have 4x, because x plus x plus x plus x. And then I'm going to have minus 42 from this side, and another minus 42. This would simplify to 42, excuse me, this would simplify to 4x minus 84. Now because this is an x and this is an 84, I cannot combine them. But now let's say it gives us more information. It says, well, let's say the court has a length of 78 feet. What would that look like? So it would be 4 times 78 minus 84 and we're going to go ahead and simplify this so I'm going to bring up my calculator and just do 4 times 78 which is 312 minus 84 
and that will give us a value of 228 feet. And that is what the length of the cord is equal to. Now the next one's a little trickier because it deals with maybe stuff we're not really familiar with. So basically when you are working at a job like at Starbucks or McDonald's or something, if you work more than 40 hours, you get something that's called time and a half, which means you get your salary plus some extra. You get uh, almost uh, a little more than what you would make. So time and a half is if you make $10, time and a half would be uh, 15. So let's go over exactly how this works. So it says at work, Nadia is paid time and a half, which means she's paid 1.5 times her no normal hourly rate for every hour she works over 40 hours. Last week, Nadia worked 50 hours. Identify the un unknown quantities. Well, I don't know how much she makes per hour, so that's my unknown quantity. How much she makes. Per hour. And it says write an expression. So I know for 40 hours she got paid her hourly rate. Now remember she worked a total of 50 hours so the additional 10 hours she worked she got 1.5 times her hourly rate. Okay. So then let's go ahead and simplify this. This is going to be 40x and then we're going to add 10 times 1.5x is 15x and since these both have the variable x that will simplify to 55x. Now the next part it says well let's say she makes $10 an hour or excuse me $10.50 an hour. We'll just do 55 times 10.5 because that's how much she makes per hour and we're just going to multiply those two so we're going to do 55 times 10.5 which will give us $577.50 is how much she makes per hour. So hopefully that helps with the word problems. We're just going to jump in and simplify some expressions now. So looking at these what we want to be able to do is follow our orders of operations and we want to combine variables with variables and constants with constants. Remember constants are just numbers with no variables. So right here, I have a negative 3, and I want to distribute that to the 2a and to the 3. So I'm going to have 4 minus 6a. I got that by doing negative 3 times 2a. And then I'm going to have negative 3 times positive 3, which is a negative 9, plus 5a. And now what you want to realize is you're going to combine the variables with the variables, and you're going to combine constants with the constants. This next step you don't necessarily need to do, but I like just organizing my thoughts and writing them in order. So it's going to be 4 minus 9 minus 6a plus 5a. So I'm going to have 4 minus 9, which is going to be negative 5. And I'm going to have negative 6a plus 5a, which means I'm going to have minus 1a left over. You could have also written it negative a minus 5. Either one is correct. All right, same idea now. What we're going to do is combine like terms. So these both have n, so negative 6n plus 5n. That would give me, since one's negative and one's positive, that will give me negative n. And then I'm going to have minus 4 plus 7, which is going to give me a positive 3. Since there's nothing more to combine, that will be my final answer. All right, and this one's a little tricky because first we have to deal with the distributive property of this one half. So I'm going to distribute this one half to both of these. So that's going to look like 6x over 2 minus 8 over 2. The next thing what I'm going to need to do is distribute this negative to these two terms. So that's going to be negative 3x, and then a negative times a negative is a positive, so that's going to be a positive 4. So now I'm going to just simplify this now. So negative 6x divided by 2 is 3x minus 4 minus 3x plus 4. Now you're going to be able to identify the zero property here because this is basically saying 3x minus 3x, which is just 0. And then I'm going to have negative 4 
plus 4, which is also just 0, and 0 plus 0 is 0. So that is your final answer. Remember, if you have any questions, please email your teacher on the homework and the concept. And yeah, if you have any questions, let us know.